Hi, and welcome to another episode of Better Golfer Today, hosted by Tyler Dice Golf. How you doing? Everyone have a good week? We have another great show planned for y'all today. As always, I try to give you some great insight into getting better at golf. My goal here is to save you time as you try and get better. There's no reason for you to take to make the same mistakes I did and try the same crappy things I've tried. So learn from me and my mistakes and learn from what works. Remember, I'm out here doing this. I practice and play myself and I take pride in the information I put together. I wouldn't give you anything I haven't tried or wouldn't try. So so please, you know, when I give you information, just know that like, hey, like it's either I'm doing it, I've done it, or a good friend of mine is doing it or has done it. So I'm not giving you anything crummy. Okay, so let's get back to the podcast. Today's main topic is going to be on tee shots. As always, I'll be sharing what I'm working on, and this week's tip of the week is going to be on chipping as the seasons change. So chipping as the seasons change. Okay, you guys ready to go? Let's get started. This week's main topic is going to be on tee shots. I find that tee shots are very important to playing great golf, and if you want to improve your scores, getting better off the tee is a great place to start. But how should you practice tee shots? What should you practice? Where should you practice? When should you practice? How do you know you're getting better? Before I dive into these questions, I want to clear something up. A lot of people seem to think that if they're hitting lots of fairways, they're hitting their tee shots good. And this isn't the case. It does, it does not mean that at all. In fact, this is an incredibly inaccurate way to determine if you're doing good off the tee. What matters with your tee shots is if they give you the best chance to get your next shot close to the hole. That means a good lie, fairway rough or bunker, a good angle to the pin, less trouble in your preferred shot's path, no trees blocking the green or pin, and most importantly, a good yardage for you. This is what matters with your tee shots. It's not about hitting it the farthest down the fairway. It's about giving you the best chance to get your next shot close. It doesn't matter if you can hit it 350 down the middle. What matters is if that 350 down the middle, number one, gives you a good angle and gives you a good yardage to the next to the flag, okay? That's what's important, okay? It's not about the shot that you just hit off the tee. It's about the shot that you're going to hit next after your tee shot, okay? That's what's important. So how how should you practice? Okay, um, this is something that gets asked a lot. Like, how, how, I mean, honestly, how should you practice? What I'm practicing is I like to I get I, I like to imagine that there's a fairway on the driving range. Okay, and so typically it'll be like over a target green, and uh, my range there's actually a big there's a target there's a green and there's a bunker to the side of it, and uh, at the angle that I usually hit from. I try and fly my balls over that bunker. Um, it's about 20 yards uh, wide. And so I know that if I'm flying the ball over that bunker, that I'm, that I'm hitting the ball pretty, pretty darn close to where I'm aiming. Okay? So I'm trying to hit shots over that bunker. Um, and so that's how I aim. I like to hit fades, and I like to hit draws over that bunker. I like to hit my normal trajectory i like to bump it up and hit higher ones and i like to knock it down and hit lower ones and the most importantly i focus on hitting shots solid that's how i practice um, you can do things a little bit differently if you only want to work the ball one way then only work it one way it's fine um, i tend to need to hit the ball work it right and to the left so i need to i have to practice that um, and I sometimes need to hit the ball higher so it carries more and hit the ball a little bit lower so it'll run out more. And then uh, hitting shots at solid is very important to players at my level because if you're not hitting it solid, you're losing uh, your smash factor is going to go down. And if your smash factor goes down, your ball speed is going to go down and you're not going to hit the ball as far. So hit shots solid. So I, I work on that. I, I, that's, I mean, and... Yeah, so that that's how I practice. That's the things that I look for in my practice sessions. Um, 
And in case you're wondering, if you want to hit the ball more solid, hitting shots solid comes down to your fundamentals, like your alignment, posture, setup, ball position, um, grip, that sort of stuff. That's what goes into hitting shots solid. So good fundamentals means solid shots. Bad fundamentals mean not solid shots. Okay? So, in summary, how should I practice? I work the ball, change up trajectories, and I hit shots solid. Uh, so, uh, what should you practice? Like, what are the things you should be focusing on when you practice? Uh, again, I talked about this earlier. Fundamentals. I'm a big believer in fundamentals. Uh, I think everyone that takes golf seriously is a big believer in their fundamentals. So, I know what my fundamentals are and what they look like to me. And so you should also know what your fundamentals are and how, what they look like for you. I also focus in on uh, attack angle. Um, with your tee shots, you, especially with a driver, you want to hit up on the ball. So if you're not hitting up on the ball, you're hitting down the ball, you're going to get lower, lower trajectories. You're going to have the ball is going to have a tendency to go more to the right. And you're going to have a tendency to not hit shots as solid. So um, attack angle is a big deal for me. So I try work on making sure I hit up on the ball because that's what matters to me. Um, I also work on my swing mechanics, like my swing path. That's uh, that's important to me because uh, if it's bad, I start hitting shots sideways. Simple as that, right? So swing path. And I focus in on my ball flight. And so there's a certain way I like my ball to fly as it goes through the air. And that uh, uh, matches up well with how my driver is fit. So if the ball is not doing that, I know something's amiss. Okay, where should you practice? There's two places. Either the driving range. Well, I should say there's three places now. Um, a couple years ago there weren't, really. Uh, but now there is. So there's the driving range. There's your golf course. And there's a simulator or a hitting bay. Um, those are your three options, really. So, range, golf course, simulator, slash hitting bay. There's pros and cons to all of them. Um, you know, your, your golf course is going to have a much more realistic uh, uh, aspect to it. Your driving range is going to have to use your imagination a little bit more. But uh, the, the plus of the driving range is you've got a lot more golf balls right there. Um, and the simulator and the... Uh, Hitting base, if you have, uh, say, like a flight scope or a track man there with you, you can get a lot of great data in a hitting bay hitting, hitting your woods. Um, in fact, you can probably get your most accurate data in those hitting bays uh, uh, with your woods versus your irons. Um, so so uh, practicing any of those three places, there's pros and cons to all of them. Uh, I wouldn't uh, t tell you not to practice anywhere, really. Um, so any of those work, work great. Um, but I always would tell you, hey, get out. Getting outside is going to be, um, you know, it's really going to, like, seeing what your ball does on a simulator screen and seeing what, it, the, what the numbers say is a whole lot different than seeing uh, the golf ball fly on the golf course, okay? So, 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 um, you know, being able to, 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 like, put the two together and have, like, a picture in your head of what it looks like on the golf course and uh, knowing that that picture is what the data spits out in the hitting bay um, you know means something so so don't go all into one here but but kind of do all, all three um, now when should you practice uh, I think you should practice when you're loose well I should when you're hitting tee shots you should practice when you're loose and when you're tired uh, the reason for that is if you're stiff and you're trying to hit drivers, uh, they're just not going to be good. And so you're kind of just wasting your time. So so make sure you're loose. Make sure you've hit, hit, hit a fair number of golf balls to get warmed up before you start working on your driver. And I, I also like to do it when I'm tired because, because we, as golfers, like to play in the summertime. And in the summertime, it gets hot. Especially in southeastern United States, it gets really, really, really darn hot. So you want to be able to practice when you're tired, because when it's super hot, like 100 degrees with like 85% humidity, um, you're sweating a ton. When you get to that 15th hole, 16th hole, you know, it's you know you've been out there a while. It's it's a grind, okay? So 
you want to practice hitting tee shots when you're tired because that's what it's going to be like when it's super hot outside and you're coming down the stretch, okay? So practice when you're loose and practice when you're tired. And know how to handle each situation accordingly. Alrighty, let's move on. How do you know if you're getting better? This is a good question. This is why That's why I put it down here. If your tee shots aren't costing you penalty shots and you're hitting the ball exactly where you want it to go, you're doing things right. And exactly where you want the ball to go means, hey, I want to have a sand wedge in my hands from 100 yards. And if your tee shots get putting a sand wedge in your hands from 100 yards, you're doing some things right. Okay? So, if your tee shots are staying in play, and you're hitting the ball where you want it to go, you're doing things good. If they're not doing those things, then you got some work to do. Okay? And remember, a good tee shot helps you hit a good or better approach shot. If your approach shots aren't good, your tee shots aren't helping you. Okay? If your approach shots aren't good, your tee shots aren't helping you. And that's all I have for you on the main topic. So let's move on to what I'm working on. I am working on improving my putting from 9 to 15 feet. It's a fact. I, that's what I, that's, I, I struggle there. And so until I get it exactly where, where I want to get it, that's what I'm working on. So this is a high, 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 super high priority for me right now. In fact, the first thing I do when I get to the golf course is I putt. After stretching, of course, but I putt. And so I've been gathering a lot of stats on my game, and I've talked about this last week too. Um, and this is one area where I'm super far behind. So I'm still working on it, and I'm going to keep working on it until it's where it's supposed to be. And so uh, I am working on that. Uh, I'm also working on getting more flexible and improving my range of motion. This will help my long game in the winter months, okay? So, working on getting more flexible and working on my putting. That's what I'm currently working on. All right, moving on to the tip of the week. Currently, the weather is changing pretty quickly in my neck of the woods. We literally went from 85 degree days to 65 degree days in two weeks. Uh, That's kind of how it is here. But uh, so yeah, things got cooler and wetter overnight and they're becoming the norm. Like this morning, morning of this podcast, I went out and practiced 38 degrees. Yep, it's not, it's the end of October and it's 38 degrees outside. Um, And like I said, two weeks ago, it was 75 when I woke up. So that's a pretty drastic drop. So again, things are getting cooler, and obviously, because it's co- because it's cooler, things are getting wetter and damper in the morning. And one of the first things I see people struggle with is they're chipping from tight lies. In the summer, with firmer ground conditions, tight lies chips become a little easier. But right now, any issue you have is magnified because the ground's softer. So make sure you stay centered and rotate on these shots to avoid chunking them or sculling them. Okay, that makes sense. Ground's wetter, the leading edge likes to dig a little bit more than it usually has, and so you want to make sure you stay centered and you rotate and keep that leading edge and and activate and engage the bounce of the wedge so that you don't uh, stick that wedge into the ground, causing you to chunk it. Okay? Pretty simple. So stay centered, rotate for the tight lies chips. And uh, that's all I have for you this week. Uh, I know it was a little bit quicker of an episode, a little shorter of an episode, But um, I hope you enjoyed listening because, as always, I enjoy putting these together. I like sharing with you what I'm working on, and I like giving you the insights that I have. So uh, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.